David Graham is a speaker, author, businessman, former pastor, and founding director of Youth with a Mission Montana. David is also the author of the song, In Moments Like These. This song appropriately describes this podcast, which is a short, biblically-based, and encouraging devotional influenced by David's lifetime of personal moments. These moments are shared with a heart to encourage and inspire you to see Him, our Heavenly Father, at work in your own moments. I know this is David's heart in sharing because he has spent my lifetime speaking hope and encouragement into my own heart. If you can, take a few minutes and listen today. I am really proud of the things he has done throughout his life, but what I am the most proud of and grateful for is the kind of dad, daddy, that he has been to me. I remember the wheels hitting the runway with a screech at the Spokane International Airport. Before the plane had even come to a stop, I was out of my seat, leaving my coat, my carry-on, and my briefcase behind. In desperation, I shoved my way toward the front exit. As the head flight attendant began opening the door, I joined her, much to her surprise and annoyance. I lunged forward like a crazy man, gasping for breath with each step until I couldn't move any further. I remember leaning hard against the jetway wall and then slumping into a human ball on the floor. I thought I was having a heart attack. Not long after, two men in white coats lifted me onto a rollaway stretcher and wheeled me through the crowded airport. Within minutes, I was in an ambulance and on my way to a Spokane hospital. In no time at all, I'm lying on my back, looking up at the bright lights of the emergency room. When the ER doctor came to my bedside, Mr. Graham? Yes, yes, doctor, I said. What's wrong with me, doctor? Well, you're not having a heart attack, which was our first concern. You're having a panic attack. A panic attack? What? If he had said heart attack, I would have understood. A heart you can maybe fix. But how do you fix a panic attack? Well, uh, what do we do, doctor? What do we do? First of all, Mr. Graham, I'm going to give you a sedative to relax you. I want you to try to get a good night's sleep in a nearby hotel. And then you probably need to see a counselor. I'm thinking, what? A counselor? I am a counselor. The next morning, I decided I was not going to get on another airplane. So I rented a car and began the five-hour drive home. Two-thirds of the way there, it hit me again. I had to pull over. I got out, and I began walking around the car in circles. I remember kicking the tires on each pass. I didn't think I could go on. But somehow, minutes later, I managed to force myself back inside into the driver's seat. With my head partway out the window, freezing and again gasping for air, I drove the next 80 miles in a complete state of panic. My loving and concerned wife, Kathy, rushed out to greet me when I finally pulled into our driveway, a day late and a very different man than I was before. Being home didn't help. The attacks were frequent. On several occasions, I found myself fleeing from otherwise harmless situations. Once in a supermarket, I ran in a panic from a checkout stand, leaving my groceries behind. I never went back for them. Fear seemed to be a constant threat, and I felt like I was living in a gray fog. How could this happen to me? Not only a Christian, but a former counselor and pastor. From the time I was a child, I knew God was with me and had been guiding me down his path. Suddenly, I felt like I had veered off the path, fallen off a cliff, and landed hard. I was afraid and confused. Really, what was the meaning of all this? Who was I? And where was I going? I just couldn't understand. But God did. God understood, and at just the right time, 
He would step into my world with powerful answers to my agonizing questions. And along with his answers came an amazing, life-changing, and lasting peace. And along with the peace came new strength I had never known before. And along with the strength came confidence that I had never known before. It was so strange and so wonderful, like biblical. Paul the Apostle said in 2 Corinthians 12.10, Out of my weakness, I am made strong. And that's exactly what God did for me. He lifted me up out of the dust of my weakness and he set me back on the path. This time, a stronger person than I had ever been. In fact, within only two short years of my trip to the emergency room, God would ask me to take on the greatest mission, the greatest challenge of my entire lifetime. Dear friend, I'll be sharing my story of recovery, no, my discovery in more detail, just how God did what he did and what I learned from it. But for starters today, I feel he wants me to plant these few thoughts. I'll lead in this way. The Bible is packed with narratives that contain expressions of strong human emotions. I just happened to be reading yesterday from Psalm 31. Here David describes a time when he had been in a gray fog. Listen to a few of David's dusty phrases. In a panic, I cried out. Turn your ear toward me. Rescue me quickly. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My soul is wasting away. But the narrative changes, and David voices words like, and watch the shift here, but I'm trusting in you, O Lord, saying you are my God. My future is in your hands. How great is the goodness you have stored up for those who fear and love you. You hide them in the shelter of your presence. And finally, the last line of Psalm 31, So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. Maybe you've never been there. Maybe you can't quite relate to an extreme emotional state as the psalmist described or the one I described. Thankfully, most people will never experience a panic attack like I did when I was a much younger man. But almost everyone has bouts with worry anxiety, depression, or even occasional sudden fear. Perhaps in times and moments like these, you feel somewhat vulnerable. Maybe you're feeling like you're on the cliff's edge. Well, my friend, I want to encourage you. I believe our Father in Heaven wants to step into your personal world with personal and powerful answers for whatever you may be going through. Specifically, I believe He wants to teach you how to have authority over your emotions. Like with David, God wants you to make a shift in your personal narrative. Because as was true in my case, I believe that he wants to give you peace, strength, and confidence unlike you've never known. Here's a promise from Psalm 2911. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. That's the honest to God truth. And I feel I'm to leave you today with this. If you're on the edge and a little shaky, God, the Father in heaven, the ultimate parent, is asking you to turn around and look to him. He's the one standing on the path that will lead to an exciting new future for you, for others, and for his kingdom. And finally this. And this is where it all restarted for me, my awakening. If you are a Christian, a follower of Christ our Savior, and if you haven't fully understood this before, I'm believing you will soon, you are one of the Father's beloved and honored significant sons and daughters. And I feel prompted to say this, despite your weaknesses and even your failings, your Father the ultimate loving parent. He loves you so much, there are moments when he can barely stand. He wants you to know that. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, 
Help this one you love so much to fully understand and embrace this truth. Let it be, Father. You've been listening to In Moments Like These with David Graham. If you'd like to contact David or find out more information about In Moments Like These, please visit InMomentsLikeThese.com.